Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another requested prop. It's the Bifrost Sword, or Heimdall's Sword, or Hope Fund. It's the one that activates the Rainbow Bridge, the Bifrost. Hope Fund is a huge two handed sword. One wiki page says it's five feet long, and the smith who made the first prop said it was five and a half feet long. I found a really clear picture of the sword from Thor the Dark World and enlarged it to five and a half feet, and that's what I'm going to use for my pattern. I'm going to make the blade from foam, so I need a core to keep the blade stiff. How wide is this? I have a graphite tube that's just over nine millimeters in diameter. Wow, that's nine all on its own. All right. The body of the blade will be 10 millimeters thick foam with a layer of four millimeter to hide the core. And I'm going to use 10 millimeter triangular dowels for the sharp blade edges. Now that I have a plan for the blade, I'll make the grip. For the grip, I'm going to try doing wood. And I've already kind of cut it down to about the block that I need. So I'm going to sand the sides and start getting this kind of shape. And I think I'm just going to make the hilt out of wood. After getting the sides sanded smooth, I marked the center and set the piece up in my drill press. And I drilled a nine and a half millimeter hole for the graphite rod. Then I set up my one inch belt sander. I removed the plates that keep things square and I just rolled the wood around until I got the shape that I wanted. I started with using a 40 grit belt and then smoothed it out with a 120 grit belt. Once I had the shape I wanted, I started to draw the knot work that runs along the grip. I felt pretty confident about knot work after doing the Valhalla axe. The truth is, I ran out of pencil eraser before I was finished. After the pattern was drawn, I etched it into the wood with a grinding stone on my rotary tool. All right, that took longer than I care to admit, but I've, I've, I've got the knot work pretty much finished on the wooden handle, and I'm able to remind myself why I typically work with foam. It's a lot faster to get things done. But the grip of this sword needs to be wood because it would just deteriorate with, with the length that it's going to be if it wasn't solid. All I'm gonna do now is stain it. I quickly stained the old pine wood with some dark walnut, and once it was dry, I stained it again with some brown shoe polish. The walnut was just not red enough for what I wanted. I could just use a redder stain, but I didn't have any, so I just worked with what I already had. Next, I start the cross guard, which I cut from 10 millimeter HD foam. I grind the edges to be smooth. These smaller radius curves make it really difficult to get a clean cut with a hobby knife. There are raised details on the cross guard. So for the first layer, there's gonna be some four millimeter HD foam. And the second layer is gonna be all knot work. So I cut a pattern from some cardstock and then cut four copies from some two millimeter HD foam. Now this particular pattern doesn't really have any crossovers, so I'm not really sure if it's technically knot work. Before I applied contact cement to the four millimeter pieces, I traced down the pattern again in pencil so when I did glue the two millimeter layer over it, I had a guide to help keep things correct. Then glue the panels back to the cross guard. I'll use my rotary tool again to smooth out the edges that didn't line up. Now the graphite rod needs to run through the cross guard and it's gonna be easier to just cut it in half and grind out the center. I'll glue it back together over the rod once the blade is done. The seam that this makes is easily hidden behind the center knot work, which I cut out just like the sides with a four millimeter layer, but this time around the edges of the four millimeter layer. And I'm also going to apply a two millimeter detail layer with the knot work design, and this one actually has crossover in it. Like I did with the Valhalla axe build, I use a wedge tip on my wood burner to suggest that the strands of the knot work is weaved over and under itself. Once fully assembled, the cross guard will look like this. The pommel is made from layers as well. The center six millimeter layer has the wing shape. Then there's a middle layer, also six millimeters, topped with a two millimeter knotwork layer. The wood burning tool is set at 50% power and this works really well. It's easy to use and it doesn't just simply disintegrate the foam. I also use the wood burner to add details to the wings. This time I thought ahead and added them before I glued everything together. I also removed a section so the pommel can fit over the threaded rod that I plan to use to attach to the grip. And everything fits, so I glue the rod in place now. More time for that glue to dry. I was amused that there was a small hole in the wood that the glue could escape from. Well, I filled that little hole in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the pommel is starting to come together 
These two six millimeter layers had the top edges rounded over, just like it did in the middle of the cross guard. And then the two millimeter knotwork is laid over the top on each side. I'll trim off the extra that hangs over on the base. Oh yeah, that's fine. It is a little bit smaller. I could, I could grind down the sides a little bit and I could put a band on it if I wanted to, but I think I'm okay with it. So I've got the pommel then. Now I get to make a four foot long blade. Because the blade is so long and the pattern is so long, I put a bunch of tape on the backside to help strengthen it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and cut this out. I cut down the paper to be just the blade and mark the center line of the blade. So the sword blade is going to be interesting. I'm going to cut it into four pieces. I'm going to have two halves that are 10 millimeter each. That's going to go on either side of the core piece. And I want it to go all the way to the tip because Heimdall's usually putting the sword point down whenever he's posing with it or, or, or activating the Bifrost. So I want to make sure the core goes all the way to the tip so you can actually do that and pose with it at a con. It's gonna be fun, right? So I only need that little sliver, more or less, all the way down. <laughs> all right, now to, to cover all the seam, I'm gonna be putting on bits of poster board and then on top of that, some four mil because it's got the, the raised flutes in the middle. So that'll be done with, with uh, four mil. But um, yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I cut off nine millimeters from the side because I plan to use triangular dowels for the cutting edges. So the graphic is the full blade, right? The full width of it all the way down to the actual cutting edge. By moving in just a little bit and cutting off this, portion is what I'm going to cut out of a flat edge foam and I'll replace the cutting edge with some triangular dowel piece. By gluing this piece onto the blade, I'll get the full width back. I line up the factory edge with some 10 millimeter foam to where the core will be. I trace my pattern and cut both halves of the blade. Then I cut down the pattern to be just the fuller line and trace that onto some 4 millimeter foam. I just use one side and flip it over. That way I can keep all the lines symmetrical. When I cut them out, I cut it on an angle. These should be sloping down to the blade and not just flat stacked on top of it. To make the fuller groove down the blade, I tape my foam onto a three quarter inch dowel, keeping the center line straight, and then grind the top flat, almost all the way through the foam, but not all the way, because I don't want holes. Then I untape the foam and lay it out flat again and I get a near perfect fuller right down the center of my blade. The angle cuts tear a little on this thin foam, so I clean up all the marks and then clean up the flat edges on the main blade. To assemble the blade, I start with a poster board copy of the four millimeter layer, and I have lines marked on it to show where I need to glue the 10 millimeter foam, it's slightly off center, which gives me room for the graphite rod core. Keeping the blade from curling at this stage is very difficult. And then I add the second half of the main blade, this is a little easier, and cap the top with another poster board copy. The poster board helps to stiffen the blade and keeps the four millimeter layer from caving into the void that's around the core. Then I place the four millimeter layer. I have pieces of paper to keep most of the contact cement from sticking, because I can just pull out one piece and make sure that area is on correctly before moving on to the next section of the blade. So I've managed to keep this, the blade straight, which makes me really happy. But when I was gluing it together, I pulled one side a little more than the other. So the, the points don't line up, which is actually very disappointing. So I'm gonna grind them down and correct them as much as I can. A little bit of sanding with a belt sander, and I can start applying contact cement to the edges. I wanna stick the triangular dowel to the side to look like the sharp cutting edge and I get to cut it to a point at each of the bumps. So I've got decorative seams to hide when I glue new pieces on, which is good because these dowels are only 36 inches long and the blade is a little over 44. I start trimming the shoulder of the blade to fit the cross guard. 
They're close, but they're supposed to be close. One thing I need to do is I need to add a piece. There's a piece that... Oh, I just do that. All right. I need an extra filler layer on the center to not work piece because of the four millimeter fuller strip on the blade. So I cut the tip off the filler layer. Then when the cross guard is glued on, the knot work piece can span from the filler layer to the fuller layer. I dry fit the wooden grip and see how much graphite tube I need to cut off. Just about four centimeters. Now grind down the ends to where the foam meets the wood because I want them to be a pretty close size. Alrighty, I can paint it. First, I paint the entire blade with a layer of contact cement. That really helps to fill in the small holes and smooths out all the fuzz from the sanding. Then I sprayed all the foam with two coats of black Plasti Dip. I used some bright metallic spray paints to cover the blade, the cross guard, and the pommel. After I glue the three pieces together with 5 minute epoxy, I weather the blade just a little with some thin acrylic paint. Now, I just want some definition on the blade. I don't want it to be loaded up with rust. Most of the materials I used are available for order and you can have them shipped right to you. I put a list and some links in the description. And so I've completed Hofund, or the Bifrost Sword. It's Heimdall's two-handed weapon. This thing is really cool, and I'm really very happy with how incredibly light it is. This thing doesn't weigh anything, which, you know, makes sense, because I built the whole thing out of foam and it's got a pine grip, right? Now, the one thing I noticed while building it, the end here, just the way it's got all the shapes going on, it really kind of reminded me of something. It reminded me of my car keys. Which I suppose makes sense. It is kind of a, a key to Asgard, right? You, you put it into the slot and you twist it and it activates the Bifrost and off you go. Well, I know there's going to be lots of different ways that you could make a two-handed weapon, but uh, this is how Odin makes. I want to thank Ryan Morsky, Retro Sherman, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. <laughs>